At the end of yesterday's episode, after defeating an incredibly tough Deathclaw named Rar, we finally made our way to the very end of the Divide. We found a door leading to Ulysses' temple. This spot was one of the many locations we saw marked on the map of the Divide back at the meteorological station in Big Mountain. For some reason, Ulysses decided to make this his base of operations. To find out why, we head inside. With that, we complete the quest, The Divide, and begin the quest, The Courier. We find ourselves in a small room surrounded by rubble and boxes. If we squeeze through a gap between two shipping crates, we find two military shipping crates on the ground and one first aid kit, locked with an average lock. Heading west, we pass the corpse of a marked man, and then we can open the sliding door to the northwest. This brings us to a long hallway. To the right, we find a door locked with a hard-locked terminal. Upon hacking it and releasing the door mechanism, we find another storage room littered with more junk. Oh. We can open some lockers to the northeast and then try to sift through this rubble. Aside from some crafting components, we don't find much. However, there is a mine box to the west with pulse mines inside and then two grenade boxes on a higher shelf. We find a final mine box to the north and when done, we can head back to the hallway and move south. Now we heard a sentry bot barking orders and running around in the adjacent room so we know what to expect. Pulling out our arc welder. That does the trick. Here, we find another map, identical to the one in the meteorological station at Big Mountain. Except that we now know why that magnifying glass was sliding all over the map. It was pinpointing these red radioactive symbols. Since it's surrounded by a bunch of yellow radioactive symbols, I interpret this to mean that these are the locations of the still active nuclear warheads buried in the Divide, one of which just so happens to be exactly where we now stand, Ulysses Temple. We see a window to the right and two locked doors, one to the southeast requiring a key and one to the southwest requiring a key. And on the wall next to it is another commissary. Okay, looks like we have to unlock these doors from the adjacent terminal. Here we find three options. The first is iBot maintenance report. We learn that pods one and three are inactive and unoccupied, but pod two is active and occupied. Estimated iBot damage, 0%. Backing out of this, we can choose the next option to access the iBot maintenance area. iBot maintenance area security system activated. Do you wish to proceed? Yes, but it looks like we're gonna have to destroy another sentry bot. Ooh, and turrets. turret meant business. In this room we find a workbench and a box filled with scrap and ammo crafting supplies and then we see an iBot floating in this central pod. We see a repair pod terminal on a table in front of it and accessing it we can choose to open repair pod 2. Eddie, are you okay? What happened? You just took off like you finally found home. An overwrite frequency? So what? Ulysses just called you here? We can pass a 60 science check to say, must have been an override function piggybacked on that broadcast. And that's what pulled you here. But why would he do that? It wasn't to lure me here. Ulysses already knew I was coming. Whatever he's planning, Ulysses obviously wants you there. Come on, I'd hate to disappoint him. With that, we again get Eddie's enhanced sensors perk. However, rescuing Eddie is optional. If we choose to leave Eddie in his pod, we get a perk called Lonesome Road. You left Eddie behind in Ulysses' temple. Not that you needed the help anyway. 
As long as you have no companions, your attacks inflict 10% damage, and you have plus 10% accuracy in VATS. This is similar to the Lone Wanderer perk from Fallout 4, but we can only get it by leaving Eddie behind. However, rescuing him has its own benefits. With Eddie back as a companion, we can have him activate this commissary terminal. We can now restock on ammunition and repair any of our gear, the last opportunity we'll have before our final confrontation with Ulysses. When ready, we can go back to the terminal on the desk and choose Access Main Corridor. This unlocks the door to the southeast. On the other side, we find a wrecked hallway, and amongst the rubble is a first aid kit right next to an auto dock. We can take the opportunity to heal on up before heading southwest down the hallway. Here, we find an elevator to the temple. Once we ascend this elevator, we can't return until we end this. We have a choice. A choice we've had this entire time. Because after all, you can go home, Courier. But instead of doing that, we can take the elevator. place, NCR's shadow falls. Or is it just you, Courier, without the bear's corpse to weigh you down? Judging by your shadow, maybe you can't let your machine go. Doesn't matter now. Either way, the Divide Giants are awakening. The missiles here on their way home. There is no way to stop them. You are too late. The Divide is awakening. The package and the message within have come full circle. The sequence has begun just as before. Except this time, the missiles will touch the sky instead of being locked beneath the ground. I still don't understand. Why are you doing this? You've answered your own question, and you'll die with that question on your lips. You don't see, listen, even when it's all around you, no matter if I nailed it into your head like a gift from Kaisar. You brought the divide to life, Courier. You walked the road, brought the bear, then the bull, brought me following your tracks. And when I saw the divide you made, I saw a second chance, a new way of thinking. My world, no longer the East, and you brought the West in that package, destroyed it all, nearly killed me, flesh and spirit. You've destroyed something larger than the bear, greater than the bull. And even when you could have turned away, you brought it again in that machine. You destroyed a nation taking its first breath. A place that could have been my home. Now, I'll destroy yours. What happened at the Divide? What I did was an accident. What you're doing, it's madness. No. Now there is purpose. I believe you when you say you were careless. The divide, the chip, the machine you brought here. Many messages can be taken from that, intended or not. What I do now is an act of conviction. If you meant to kill me, you should have done it long ago. Not if you believe in what you follow. Kill no courier. Kaiser's words. I honored them. Other couriers could have been legion, like me. The truth is, you serve nothing, believe nothing. Killing you 
meaningless. If you blame me for the divide, then let me answer for it, not others. <laughs> blame you? No. Learned from you. Both the weapon to kill a nation and the strength to do it. You showed me a road, a way to carry my message. You've already answered for what you've done. Now the flag you follow will answer for it. This is between you and me, not anyone else. No. The paths we've walked, the roads, and the flags above them carry equal blame. So, what? You intend to blow up the Mojave? No, not the Mojave. The West. All that's been built since America died. Same symbols as before the war. Now a flag carried by a tribe of children. You walked the West, didn't stay. You know the reason. The bear grows without structure, follows a symbol without knowing its history. And knowing that you believe in a bear's sickness and have given it strength, and that gives more reason to lay waste to your homeland. After this, only one flag will remain over the Mojave. Let that one fly, or destroy itself. You can't destroy the West, even with all the missiles here. <laughs> no need to destroy the bear. Just cut its throat. You taught me that at the Divide. Only need to cut off the supply line, the road, to watch something greater die. I'll turn the Long Fifteen into miles of fire. Cut off the Mojave. NCR will fall back, lose Hoover Dam, and leave their throats exposed to the Legion. Do you think I care if you fire missiles at NCR? Go ahead. You destroyed your own homeland, seeing a nation burn. Didn't think that would matter anymore to you. There's a strength in that. Lack of attachment. Still, you're here now. If there's no more answers you want, then we'll end this. At this point, we have two options. We can continue to try to reason with him, or we can fight him. We have two options to fight him. We can say, The Divide couldn't stop me. The Mojave couldn't kill me. You don't have much chance. Or we can say, Forget this. I'm going to teach you what crossing the wrong courier means. I'll finish history's work. If the Divide couldn't kill you, perhaps these spears of the old world can. Let's end this courier. You and I... Here, with the Old World flag as witness. With that, Ulysses turns hostile, and he attacks us with his automatic weapon. If we ever get within melee striking distance, he pulls out a flagpole and begins swinging it at us. To make this fight even more challenging, he has two iBot companions. One is a medical iBot that's constantly healing him, much like radiation healed the marked men in the Divide, and the other is a repair iBot. Even if we destroy both iBots, they respawn as the battle continues. There are two ways to deactivate them. We can travel down either of the two catwalks to the south or the north, which lead us down a stairway. We find the bottom of the stairway protected by laser tripwires, but if we make it to the very end, we find a console called the iBot control station. We can then pass either a repair or science check to either disconnect the iBot power or send the iBot shutdown command. When done, the iBots disengage, and we now have Ulysses by himself. But he, like many of the stronger marked men in the Divide, is prone to using Stealth Boy. I managed to finally kill him by pulling out my new most favorite thing in the whole world, the riot shotgun, and getting a few lucky criticals. But that's not it. Once Ulysses dies, the elevator doors open up and marked men flood the chamber. We now have to fight our way single-handedly through a horde of marked men. But 
that's only if we choose to attack Ulysses. We can instead try to reason with him, but in order to do so, we have to pass one of four faction checks. If we have high faction with the NCR, we find an option to say, even if you have no faith in the NCR, I do. My actions have proved it. Your actions have carried strength. If you speak for the two-headed bear, I'll hear your words, even if I will be the only one to hear them. If you believe it should not die this day, then answer me why. Or we can pass a Legion reputation check to say, the Legion is stronger than you know. If you would judge them, hear me first. There is conviction in your words, enough to rival a legate. Perhaps, Kaiser, you believe what you say. If you feel I do not know the Legion's strength, then I will listen. Or we can pass a high Vegas reputation check to say, even if you have no faith in Vegas, I do, and my actions have proven it. Your actions have carried strength. More importantly, not for House, but for the families on the Strip. If the ghosts of Vegas have come from behind their wall to speak for the West, I'll hear their words. If you believe that Vegas does not deserve to die as the bear does, then answer me why. Or if we don't have high enough reputation with any major faction in the game, we can try to pass a reputation check that will be tagged with whichever faction has the highest reputation. We can say, you might not believe in nations, but I do. But we will inevitably fail it. Words are not enough to bear the weight of your flag. If you follow anything at all, speeches are things of NCR, words without strength. Your actions have shown nothing. Your flag will burn. The Mojave will follow. However, even upon failing it, we get the same option that we get upon passing any of the previous reputation checks, and that is a moment to reason with Ulysses. From this point, we have three options to reason with Ulysses. We can pass a 90 speech check, or we can challenge his reasoning and personal philosophy using information we've learned either from listening to his holotapes or from listening to Whitley's recording on Eddie. If we haven't found all of the holotapes, or if we refused to listen to Eddie's recordings, then these two options will not appear, leaving the 90 speech check the only way to reason with him. That said, all three of these dialogue trees are riddled with traps. We find a number of options to tell him bad information, to prove to him that we really didn't learn anything from listening to his tapes or listening to Whitley. And if we choose any of these options, he is completely unforgiving. He loses all respect for us, and he shuts down. We lose the option to reason with him, and he forces us into a violent confrontation. For example, we find an option to say that Ulysses belonged to the new Canaanite tribe, which we already know is incorrect, and he tells us as much. New Canaan, my tribe. If you've heard my words, and that's all you've taken from them, then I was right to cast them aside. If you ever had any ability to hear anything beyond your own footsteps, the divide silenced it. Now, its voice will end you. And we get locked in to the violent option. So from here on out, I'm going to skip all of the dialogue options that are traps, and instead only choose the ones that add more to the conversation and allow us to move forward. We'll start by going down the dialogue tree that opens up if we found all of his holotapes. We can say, your tapes prove that you've walked the Mojave and learned the wrong lessons. Comes down to perspective. How far one's walked and what they've left behind. If you challenge this moment, let's hear your perspective. If my words are all you have, let's hear them. From here, we can further break down this tree by choosing one of two additional paths. We can argue using his history with the White Leg tribes, or we can argue using our knowledge of his confrontation of the think tank scientists in the Big Empty. We'll start by talking about the White Legs. In the logs of the White Legs, you mentioned your tribe and its past. My tribe? That log? No. It concerned the White Legs, training them to kill. For Kaisar, 
There is no meaning there beyond the road to New Canaan, the history of the murder of its people, and Kaisar's past. I'm talking about the past in the respect that they showed you. Respect? The brains I wore, they took that from me. Thought it made them more like me, more willing to have Kaisar listen. They didn't know what the braids meant, the mark of my tribe, before Kaisar came. Before Wolpus came for them at Dry Wells. There was death in that meeting, even while Wolpus smiled, asked for our help against the other tribes. All the while, they were looking to cast our history on the fire, and did. Another tribe, consumed by the bull. Nothing left. So you carry two symbols, then. The Mark of America, and of the Twisted Hairs, neither of whom are dead. Both. Both survived. Pieces of them. Remnants. Nothing more. If you feel there is meaning in the white legs taking the braids of my tribe, what they did, insult, not respect. At this point, he has the same response to all three of these options. We can say, it's proof that killing a symbol is going to be harder than you thought. Or what it means is that the pieces that survive can become worse than they were before. Or that maybe there's something similar to be said about that old world flag on your back. You're saying when the meaning gets lost, that what happens here can make things worse. Happened in the Mojave. Flags of the bear and the bull. With that, he gets it, and we can talk him down. But going back to explore the other options, we can instead argue using his experiences with the think tank in the Big Empty. And we can start by saying, who are you who do not know your history? That question... Either you walked the big empty, you found the last of the hollow tapes. The words are mine. Whatever answer you think they hold, you're wrong. It was a question, nothing more. The question reminded the ones you spoke to of their purpose and why they cared. I spoke those words in anger. I did not expect an answer. All was lost. I thought it was the end. Past their graves of failed technology, they had cared about the flag they had followed and the people beneath it, even with them dead and gone. But there's no answer in that. I do this because I care, because I believe it must be done. You said in the logs yourself that technology is a dead road. These missiles will solve nothing. Those are my words. After what happened with the Brotherhood, talking with them, then with the rulers of the Big Empty. But it is their philosophy that was flawed, their weapons used with new perspective. Those weapons can be used to kill a symbol that has already proven itself wrong. Proven itself wrong by your standards or by history's? Both. Why do you care? Any symbol deserves a chance to defend itself by words or acts. Not this. As you defend it now. It hasn't proven itself wrong. That's why the Legion and the NCR conflict must continue. To test it. Test it. As you test me. As if you believe that there is some other road here. Well, if you believe the destruction of the Divide was just, then I can't stop you. Just? There was no justice in it. It was an act of carelessness. A coward killing an idea before it had a chance. I see your meaning. You're tying this to our history. But it is a different. The symbol I destroy. It has already proven itself wrong. And with that, we successfully talk him down. But the other option is to use what we learned from listening to Eddie's logs. Instead of talking about his holotapes, we can say, if my words won't change your mind, what about the messages in the iBot? The machine made from the parts of Navarro. It had only one message in its core, to get home at any cost. It echoes its master, and soon the missiles here will as well. 
It has history inside it. The logs of what's left of America. There is nothing inside the machine except the means to awaken the missiles in the Divide. That is its only message. The iBot was a courier sent to the West to make contact with the remnants of America. You lie. There was only one message in the machine, only one message in the package that you brought. The Divide bore the symbol of America, as did the package from Navarro. The origins of the machine is of no importance. Ulysses responds the same way to both of these options. We can say that the package I brought was from Navarro. The Divide scanned Eddie's logs back from the Mojave. You interrupted its journey west, trapped it. If any part of America survived, it's cut off now. What do you seek to gain by telling me this? If you think that the symbol I wear is a weakness. And we successfully talk him down. Our third option is to pass a difficult 90 speech check. And the text of this check changes depending upon our reputation. If we have high NCR reputation, we can say, One person can build a community, make it stronger. You saw it at the Divide, even blamed me for it. History has proven this. Our history. And you think that you have this strength enough for all of NCR. The West is not the Divide, and nothing you can do can prevent the missile's launch. Convincing me changes nothing. Or if we have High Legion fame, we can say, There is no honor in murdering from a distance. NCR or Legion. You know this from the Divide. You seek to use your own crimes to prevent mine. There is a strange honor in that. Perhaps the shadow of the bull does walk with you. The west, the east, they are not the divide, and nothing you can do can prevent the missile's launch. Or if we have high Vegas reputation, we can say, you told me once that I gave life to the divide. I can do it again and give life to Vegas. And you think that you have the strength enough to hold up NCR long enough that Vegas may live again? Even if you speak for Vegas and its ghosts, nothing you can do can prevent the missile's launch. But if we don't have high enough reputation with any of the major factions, our speech challenges here become much more difficult. We must first pass a 90 speech check to say, I need to know why you're doing this. Not for my sake, but for history's sake. The why of it. You taught me the why of it. If you believe in something enough, you must be willing to let it burn, lest it claim you. These governments of the two-headed bear, the Legion, they carry old-world ideas into an age that no longer needs them where they cannot live. And we then have to pass a 100 speech check to say, I'm not talking about the NCR or Legion. I'm talking about our history. Our history. The divide. That history has been written. It's lessons learned. There's nothing more to be dug from these cracks in the earth. No more fury to be torn from its sky. Here we find two ways to talk him down, each of which have their own dialogue trees, but achieving the same result. We can riddle him by saying, You can go home again, courier. Not a message for me, but for you. My home in the East Drywells is no more. It is part of the Legion. The only other home, the chance of a home, was what you built at the Divide. Then you destroyed it. You said... A home is a place you breathe life into, a moment where you know who you are. There is truth in that. History has proven it. But Mojave's proof that no homeland is sacred until the larger symbols are destroyed. Whatever is built, the bear, bull, even Vegas, will tear it apart, convert it either with purpose or by accident. Look, there's nothing more to say. I've already won. Everything you hate about me, you've become. If you seek to anger me, words won't be enough. 
Your moral ground is weak here in the Divide. You're planning to kill a nation from a distance, just like the NCR. Just like you accused me of. What do I care for your perspective? You walk blindly, foolishly into death. Your own and others. You do not rule my actions and do not mistake my acts for yours. No danger there. You skipped past where you build the community and moved right on into killing one. Nothing can prevent what comes. The missiles will launch. These questions, your words or mine, what do they matter to you? At last, no matter how we chose to talk him down, we get to the final dialogue tree. From here, after everything we've just worked through, we can again push him into violence by saying, Well, I just said all that because I'm betting you've got some way to stop all this. So, you resort to trickery. You were hoping that you could deceive me, reveal that somehow I can stop all this. Your nation will burn as intended, and the last words of its messenger were not for its people, but to beg for mercy. And we get locked into the violent outcome. Or we find two self-survival options, where we focus on the courier and Ulysses getting out of here alive. We can say, I believe that the missiles can't be stopped. But if you believe me, though, we might get through this. Or we can say, the symbol you wear is dead, and you helped kill it. The question is, what will you do to fix it? If we must survive to carry its message, then that is what shall be done. I will not let America die here. Or we can choose the self-sacrificial option to say, even if the missiles launch and I die here, if I can convince you, that's enough for me. It is enough. Or we can choose three faction options to convince Ulysses to let the story of the Mojave play out on its own. We can pass a neutral option to say, I believe destroying the symbol is never the answer. Changing it, that is something else. One buried this place, yet it lived on between us. One may build it again, build others. Your history has proven this here. Or we can pass either a Legion or NCR option, both of which garner the same response from Ulysses. We can pass a Legion check to say, I know one person can break a nation, but the Legion tests nations, strengthens them. Let it do so. Or an NCR check to say, I believe that one person can make or break a nation. You already know this. It may be that as much destruction has been written in the earth here, you may build something else as you built the divide. You have spoken truly. There is a shadow of a nation behind you, the hope of a people. Yet it may not matter. The divide still stands against us. Ulysses responds the same way to all three of these options. The divide stands against us? What do you mean? Our enemies gather outside. Shadows of the bear and a bull. They will have found their way in, just as you did. It was always my intention. In case I could not kill you, the Mark men would flood this place, cut off your escape. If we cannot prevent what comes, then let us make our stand here. Two couriers, together, at the Divide. With that, we successfully talk Ulysses down. But now... We have to defend ourselves. They come for us, east and west alike. The elevator door opens up and out pours a horde of marked men. The very same marked men whom we created when we first destroyed the Divide. The very same marked men that Ulysses wanted to create again by bombing the Mojave. Together we can stand side by side and put them to rest. Look down, look down, that lonesome road before you travel on. Look up, look up, and greet your maker. 
When the dust settles and the last of the marked men lie dead, Ulysses joins us as a temporary companion. We now need to figure out a way to deactivate the missiles that Ulysses has aimed at the Mojave. But before we do, we can take this opportunity to detonate six of the remaining nuclear warheads dotting the divide. These are just some of the last ones. We'll find the final two later. Once done, we can head to a large console in the middle of this room. From here we can see the nuclear missile on the platform before us, ready to launch. Upon activating the terminal, we find four options. Instead of stopping the detonation, we can choose to redirect the missiles to target Caesar's territory. If we choose this option, it will launch Ulysses' missiles against targets in the lands east of the Colorado controlled by Caesar's Legion, raining nuclear fire down on its cities and tribes. If we're sure that this is the outcome we want, we can choose yes. Alternatively, we find an option to accelerate the countdown and continue to launch the missiles at the NCR. Choosing this option will launch the missiles against targets in the heartland of the NCR, raining nuclear fire down on its cities and people. If we're sure that we want to continue, we can choose yes. Or we can choose an option to redirect the missiles to target both the NCR and Caesar's Legion. If we choose this option, Ulysses' missiles will rain down on targets in the heartland of the NCR and in the lands held by Caesar's Legion, raining down nuclear fire upon both factions. If we're sure we want to continue, we can choose yes. Upon selecting either of these three options, we fail the quest, The End, and we start the quest, The Apocalypse. The room shakes in detonations, and we have to flee the chamber. But before we do, there is a fourth option. We can attempt to cancel the launch altogether. The abort code is encrypted with an incredibly advanced pre-war military encryption sequence. You'd have to be a code-breaking robot to crack it in time. We have to ask Eddie for help. Of course, we're locked out of this option if we chose to leave Eddie back in the charging dock. Experiment log 369248-A. iBot Duraframe Universal Interface Override System. This is Dr. Whitley presiding. Initial tests of the override system are promising. Against unsecured or lightly encrypted targets, the iBots have a 98% success rate. More heavily protected systems are still problematic. Military-grade encryption presents a very real possibility of critical overload of key systems. We've stopped tests before any robots were destroyed. But if we don't address the problem, our iBots will fry themselves hacking military networks. Are you... are you saying you can stop this missile? But the log said that this kind of encryption would kill you! No, Eddie! I won't let you sacrifice yourself like this! There has to be another way! We get the clear impression that this is what Eddie wants to do. Now we can overwrite his wishes and say, forget it, the Legion has this coming, and then turn around and launch at the Legion. Or, I don't care, I'll just change the missile's target myself. I never liked the NCR anyway. Or we can say, 
If you're really sure you want this, okay. Go ahead and stop the missile. And Eddie, goodbye. journey, my little friend. You'll have to fly very far. Fly very fast. Can you do that? I know you can. Be careful out there, Eddie. Maybe I'll see you again someday. Eddie bursts into a million pieces. He successfully aborted the launch sequence, destroying the rocket on the launch pad. But the rockets all around us begin to detonate, and we have to race out of here as quickly as possible. Racing down the middle of the room, rocked by explosions on either side, we can take the elevator out. If we chose to launch the missiles at any target, we get the following ending. The Divide erupted in fire as the flame trail of the two couriers' last message arced into the sky. If we chose to target the NCR? Missiles fell on NCR and the long 15 caravan route beyond the Mojave outpost. The road the courier had been walking when the tale began. Caravans and NCR outposts along the route were reduced to ash. An old world gift from the Divide. As catastrophic as the damage was for NCR, the act made the courier stronger for having no history and no retreat. It was an ending to things. A way of erasing the road that had led to this point, and the history that had walked with it. But if we chose to target the Legion... Missiles fell on the east, and the Legion encampment at Drywells, where the Twisted Hears had allied, then been betrayed by Wolpus and Kaisar. Legion soldiers died, their silhouettes blasted into the ground and earth, the last word of the last of the twisted hairs. It was an ending to things, a way of erasing the road that had led to this point and the history that had walked with it. If, however, we chose to target both the NCR and the Legion, the divide erupted in fire, violent, red, as the last message of the two couriers arced into the sky. The missiles rained like spears down on the land, burning flags and communities alike, destroying all they struck. The history of the West was erased for the second time, thorough and complete, and America slept once more. And if we chose to target the NCR and the Legion, but we also have the Wild Wasteland trait, we learn the following. The couriers finally really did it. They blew up the lands west and east of the Mojave, damning them all to hell. The act was discovered 200 years later, as other couriers explored the Mojave wastes. There, they saw NCR relics, reminders of their once proud history. This is, of course, a reference to the planet of the apes. If we chose to leave Eddie in his charging dock in Ulysses Temple, Eddie, the version given life by the machines of the Divide, remained frozen in the military installation where Ulysses had summoned him. The robot's last coded transmission back to his counterpart in the Mojave told of upgrades, unlocked memories, then silence. 
Not long after the courier left the facility, the robot's databanks were wiped, and it was disassembled as rapidly as it had been constructed. Or, if we chose to allow Eddie to sacrifice himself to stop the launches. When Eddie's circuits burned in the fires of the Divide, there was one small part that held on until the end. It was the fragment that held the old world memories and the words of his creator in his last moments. As his last gesture, he sent one final signal to his counterpart in the Mojave, the one from which the Eddie from the Divide had been shaped, passing along what the Courier had taught him in the Divide. For now, the Courier knew Eddie's history and could carry it even if the iBot had forgotten it. Or if instead we chose to detonate the missile and spare Eddie's life, we learned the following. Eddie, given second life by the machines in the Divide, and freed by the Courier, continued his quest west to Navarro. It may be the journey meant more than the destination, just as his counterpart in the Mojave had learned. Before leaving, he sent a coded signal to his original in the Mojave, passing along what the Courier had taught him in the Divide. With that last farewell, he set off, carrying the song of Old World Hope with him, which had given him strength and purpose on his journey. And no matter what, he knew there would be a second home to return to, Navarro or not, and that his creator would be proud. If we kill Ulysses. At the end of the struggle, only one courier remained in the heart of the Divide. The true courier. Courier Six. The courier tore the ancient flag of the Commonwealth from its cables and cast it over the corpse. Though whether done as a sign of respect or in anger for what had been endured to reach this moment, that is unknown. Interpretation is something best left to history, and only the surviving courier would ever know for certain. But if we talk him down, sparing his life... Hopeville burned, lightless in the night. Invisible fires of radiation scorching it from within and without. It is said a man still walked its streets with a tattered jacket and old world flag etched on the back. He remained there, perhaps as punishment for the scars he left on the wastes or a reminder of a history he could not forget. For Ulysses, his journey was over. The courier had been the end of his road. As for the courier, she turned her back on her home for the second time and made her way back, navigating the treachery of the Divide. Tunnelers and the marked men avoided the lone figure, as if recognizing the courier's right to passage, or out of fear. The courier walked until she stood again upon the edge of the divide, the last road she would walk before the second battle for Hoover Dam. There, beside her feet, was a final package from one courier to another, a footlocker bearing a gift and a message. But that message, it is something for couriers to carry and for them alone. The lights flickered across the divide, reminders that the old world histories persist and find meaning in the present. It said, war, war never changes. Men do, through the roads they walk. And this road has reached its end. We arrive back at the canyon entrance, and if we chose to destroy the NCR, we see it detonate off in the direction of the Mojave outpost.
Our merciless nuclear assault on the NCR has devastated the lands of California and reached even the borders of the Mojave. At the Mojave Outpost, we can now travel through the Western Gate to Long 15, the site of a devastated NCR outpost. But be prepared, the area is highly irradiated and infested with former NCR ghouls. With this, we earn the Bear Slayer perk, allowing us to put a single point into any of our special stats. We gain reputation with Caesar's Legion, but lose reputation with the NCR. But if we chose to bomb Caesar's Legion, we see the missile detonate somewhere on the other side of the Colorado. Your merciless nuclear assault on Caesar's Legion has devastated the lands east of the Colorado and reached even to the borders of the Mojave. At Cottonwood Cove, you can now take a journey by river to the site of Dry Wells, a devastated Legion encampment. But be prepared, the area is highly irradiated and infested with Legion ghouls. If we choose this option, we get the perk Scourge of the East, which also allows us to put one point into any of our special stats. We gain reputation with the NCR, but we lose reputation with Caesar's Legion. But if we chose to bomb them both, we see two nuclear detonations from both locations. Your merciless nuclear assault on the nations of the Mojave has devastated the lands of both the Legion and the NCR, and reached even the borders of the Mojave. We can now explore both locations, and instead we earn the Dead Man's Burden perk, which also allows us to put one point into any of our special stats. We lose reputation with both the NCR and Caesar's Legion, but we gain fame with the Boomers and the Powder Gangers. Because hey, they love explosions. But if we choose to not launch the missile at the cost of Eddie's life, the Divide broke cities, flayed skin from bone, and threatened to destroy the world. But you survived it and stopped it. You can put a single point into any of your special attributes. We gain reputation with the followers of the Apocalypse and the Brotherhood of Steel for stopping another Armageddon. Incidentally, this is the only way to become idolized with the Brotherhood of Steel. Even after having completed every single quest in Hidden Valley, there is simply not enough to do to become idolized unless we stop the missiles in the Divide. No matter which option we chose, at the very end, we find a crate lying next to a rock just outside the canyon wreckage. Inside, we find all of Ulysses' gear, including a holotape, Ulysses' final message. Last tape, last message. In case you best me, if you're hearing this, you have, through blood or word, this message and all that lies with it. It is for you, Courier. If you want to know the why of things, this world, I've walked a good part of it. I stopped only because of you. What you did gave me pause. Long ago, I crossed the Colorado, the first among the Legion to see Hoover Dam in all its glory, an old world wall yet bridging two sides, and beyond it, a symbol of a two-headed bear, an idea great enough to challenge Kaisar himself. Might kill him taking it, whether he won or lost. The bull needs to fight, needs the challenge. Without it, it falters, dies in the dust. Might be a lesson there in you and me. Leave the thought behind the message to you. My message is this. The destruction that has been wrought at the Divide or elsewhere, if you can stop me, it can happen again. It will keep happening. If war doesn't change, men must change. And so must their symbols. Even if it is nothing at all, know what you follow, Courier. Just 
as I followed you to the end. Whatever your symbol, carry it on your back and wear it proudly when you stand at Hoover Dam. So Ulysses discovered Hoover Dam and discovered the NCR. It was his reconnaissance that gave Caesar the impetus to march on the Mojave and try to take Hoover Dam. If not for Ulysses, the war between the NCR and Caesar's legion would not exist. In the Foot Locker, we find all of Ulysses' gear, plus one unique item, the Courier Duster. The version of the Courier Duster that we get is different depending on the choices we made in the game. If we have high reputation with the NCR, then we get a version of the Courier's Duster that has the symbol of the two-headed bear on the back. Its stats are also different. The NCR Courier Duster has a DT of 13, grants us 25 pounds to our carrying capacity, and plus one to endurance. Alternatively, if our reputation is high with the Legion, we instead get the Fighting Chance version of the Courier's Duster. This version has a Legion Bull on the back. It also has 13 DT, but instead of endurance and carry weight, its effects are plus one to strength and plus 15 action points. If, however, we don't have high faction with the Legion or the NCR, and instead have a high reputation on the Vegas Strip, we get the Old World Justice version of the Courier Duster. This version has Ulysses' Old World flag symbol on the back, and it grants us plus one to agility and plus 30% to radiation resistance. The fourth version is the Blackjack version of the Courier Duster. The only way to get this is by having below neutral reputation with all three major factions in the game, Caesar's Legion, NCR, and the Strip. This is, in effect, the Yes Man version of the Courier's Duster. This version has a poker spade on the back with the number 21. Like the others, it grants us 13 DT, but gives us plus one to luck and plus 30% to poison resistance. We also get Ulysses Duster. This version, like the house version, has Ulysses' old world flag symbol on the back. Like the courier duster, it has 13 DT, but it grants plus five to critical chance and plus one to charisma. Incidentally, it's possible to get two of these. If we choose to kill Ulysses, we can loot the one he's wearing from his body, and when we come out the other side of the canyon, we find another one in this chest. As a side note, the weight of both Ulysses and the Courier Duster is only three, giving both dusters an incredible high DT to weight ratio, making it one of the best pieces of light armor in the game. In the chest, we also find another red glare, so that's three rocket launchers we can find from the Divide. We find Ulysses' mask, which is a unique breathing mask. It only has a DT of three, but it grants us a whopping plus 50 radiation resistance, and it only has a weight of two. This is 45 radiation resistance higher than a standard breathing mask. This, when coupled with some Radaway and worn in conjunction with another radiation-boosting piece of armor like the house version of the Courier Duster, can make us nearly immune to radiation. We find a few unique consumables here, which I'm going to go over in a future episode. And finally, we find Old Glory. This is the flagpole Ulysses was using to attack us back in his temple. This amazing melee weapon does 45 damage and deals 1.9 attacks per second at the cost of 22 action points, bringing its DPS up to 85. It deals 80 critical damage and has a 1.5 critical percent multiplier. It has a special Grand Slam attack that deals 200% damage in VATS at the cost of 13 more action points. A Grand Slam critical hit does the most damage of any melee attack in the entire game. Additionally, a Grand Slam sneak attack is so powerful that it can kill any enemy in the entire game in one shot, except the X-42 Giant Robo Scorpion from Old World Blues. It can be repaired with pull cues and throwing spears. Like with Ulysses' Duster, it's possible to get two versions of Old Glory. If we kill him in the temple, we can loot one off his body, and when we come out on the other end, we find another one sitting in this crate. With that, we achieve an ending to things, as Ulysses would say, by either killing him or talking him down. And we've explored almost every location in the Divide, but we're not done. After all, 
We launched one missile, and we potentially launched two more. We now need to go and explore ground zero of all three nuclear detonations. We learned from Ulysses that the Ashton missile we launched detonated somewhere near Hopeville. Also, if we chose to leave him alive, Ulysses told us that he would meet up with us again outside Hopeville. So in tomorrow's episode, we'll track down Ulysses to see how he's doing and find the location of the Ashton missile detonation. We'll explore the Courier's Mile. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. I'm dedicating this week, just like I dedicated last week, to the Lonesome Road DLC of Fallout New Vegas. I'll publish a new Lonesome Road video every day until we complete the series. If you want to make sure that you don't miss my next episode, that you don't miss what lies in the Courier's Mile, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Who are you that do not know your history? On the front we have the quote, and on the back we've got Ulysses' Old World Flag. I have a version of this shirt with either just the text or just the Old World Flag on the back in the shop, and they all come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes. I have a bunch of other designs on shirts, mugs, and a variety of other products, so if interested you can find a link to my shop in the description below. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with episode 8.